Building Club. Four, 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 four. Life. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome back. It's uh, we're gonna do another deck tech. We got David Zola's list here. Uh, he, let's see. Let's take a look at Zola. Zola is the MC who lets all your equipment in your deck be played as characters for the rest of the game. Uh, their attack and defense are going to be equal to the cost. They're all going to be considered to have one health and swarm, so you can have multiple copies of them in play. He needs nine XP to level up. He has a uh, he gives an XP whenever anything enters the battlefield on your side. So that includes resources, characters, equipment as characters. Uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, becomes a three ten at level two, who gets the new robot body whenever he would get KO'd. You can pay a red, reveal cards from the top of your deck until you hit an equipment, which there will be a lot of in here. Um, and then that equipment comes into play as your main character. So, And it also gains this power so he can keep doing it. Uh, kind of some survivability. So we have David here on the call with us, and he's going to walk us through a little bit of the deck choice. Uh, we'll start with the curve, and we'll walk, walk through it. And I might have some questions for you as we go. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Right, so uh, yeah, just go ahead and walk us through your curve a little bit, and uh, tell us some of the thoughts behind some of it. All right, so um, when I put um the deck together, my first concern was the new body part, so I try to avoid going there with with few on um, low cost equipments in my deck. That way, you don't see none of the um aliens or hydro weapons in there at the one cost when I run the Ebony Blade, but it has so much utility, it's just worth the price of maybe getting that. Okay, so we're just going to start out here with uh, Ebony Blade, which seems like a pretty smart ad because uh, you're using yellows and Wakandas. Uh, I feel like a lot of decks in the format are going to be using Wakandas because uh, Nullifier, Serpent Crown, uh, a couple people are using gems. Like, like at least these one of a kind equipment seem pretty staple, and uh so you can turn their yellows down and flip your yellows back up for wakanda which is an easy include for this deck because most decks wakandas go find these cool like toolbox uh toolbox out some good equipment yours is go search for a character out of my deck so that i can play it for the turn right yeah so uh what what uh is it is it usually I, i'm assuming it's usually yellow that you're aiming for here with the ebony blade right Actually, I'm, I'm almost using it to turn down any basic location. Okay, so let's read. Usually, if they play in a basic location, they usually want it for something. I mean, if I can get the ability oh. to flip one of mine up, I go for it. Okay, so you're not necessarily, you're just using it as like uh, Quake's power, like MC Quake's power. You And then if you get to turn something up, it's just a bonus. So, so you're right, de denying I mean, your resources. Right, or they want to waste a plot twist just to make sure it can't strike by lowering its attack, you know, that fine by me as well. Okay, okay, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, we got Book of Ashanti, uh, pretty uh, back-breaking card uh, against decks, especially against decks that don't have a lot of plot twists, that you can tax them an extra plot twist, or they have to get rid of this before they can even start using some of their tricks. So you could turn off, a, like, three cards off of out of a person's hand just by playing this two drop so that's pretty good we got the cubes in here nullifier those are pretty standard what uh this red cube uh what are you usually sh uh shooting for what are you looking to take out of their deck usually i'm looking at anything that i feel like gonna hurt my deck um or they're gonna hit they're gonna break their deck so most cases i'm, I'm usually looking at the locations Okay, back to the location. So this you're you're trying to really like Ebony Blade, punish the locations you play, Red Cube, take away any more locations you're gonna draw. Because I mean, most people build their decks around their their MCs like superpowers, right? So turning right. that off turns off a big chunk of a lot of people's decks. So that seems pretty solid. And what else? We yeah, got? That, yeah, that, that, that's the main thing. Like say, um. If I feel like, you know, if I need to get rid of that nullifier or something, you know, to protect my main character. Okay, yep. Yeah, because yeah, nullifier will stop that ability and you wouldn't be able to uh, uh, get the new body anymore. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, we got a three cube. This is the hand cube. Does does this get used a lot or are your yellows? 
Because I kind of feel like uh, you want to save your yellows more for the. Uh... Well, this, this is just like the um, I mean, with the teams that was in this format, the the selection of equipment were kind of low. Mm -hmm. So that and then for one reason and the other reason, if I get a new buy and get into this, I may have some face up wilds I haven't used yet. Oh. Okay. And they get to me without getting back into the Hydra um card body. Gotcha. Yeah. So it it is team stamped. So when if it becomes your new body, you can use your wilds still. Okay, that makes that makes a lot of sense. And then we have like Zola's like powerhouse cards, right? We have the power lower and the Quinjet, because any deck that gets to play a three cost that's an eight eight or a six six flyer, those are great stats for like any deck. And so like those had to be a pretty easy include. Uh, we have the Cosmic Cube number four. Uh, choose an enemy supporting character. Remove it. How? Now you are not on green, so how how uh, relevant is four drop cubes ability? Um, not at all for me. Like I said, more the new body part. Okay. I went there. I mean, it's a it's a four four. So like I said, I, I opted to go with more bigger cost okay. equipment than going like with maybe another one cost hydra rifle. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So uh, then we get to another like really good card for this deck we got the minigun uh minigun for those who don't know has old painless uh the character gets range so this minigun is a 4-4 with range and whenever it attacks it puts two minus minus some counters on all unprotected characters on your opponent's side so you are a 4-4 four four that you're essentially a 6-6 six six with range because you're you're shrinking them too right uh right. and actually their whole board so this this card is this card is insane, and uh, it's really nice to put it in here because it's like a very like aggressive card. And most decks that want to play minigun have to either play a prey MC, and then they can be aggressive. But like the 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 prey like support characters in their kit is more defensive, and so it kind of usually like trying to fit a minigun into an aggressive deck by adding the supporting characters of prey. Your really only aggressive one is Hawkins, because like Poncho is fine. He has like he'll stick, but he's not really aggressive. He can't. He's not good for those aggro decks. So this this getting placed to find this card is really nice. And then we skip five drops altogether. Uh, why is that? Um, first of all, I mean I didn't really want one of five cost cube. That's the only five equipment that was in this format. Um, two of uh, reason one um. Because I could double down, maybe playing a, a, another power loader again if I need to nullify something I had open this. And the third thing, if I do keep a power loader on the board and have another one in hand, equip that onto Zolo to make your defense get bigger. Okay, okay, that makes sense. So you can, you can on turn five, you can drop the 6-6 six, six or 6-6 six, six flyers or 8-8s eight, are still strong on five, right? So that, that makes sense. And you still have uh, wiggle room as far as resource points goes after that. So uh, we got a mind gem, which I imagine is pretty strong in this deck. Like uh, a lot of people uh, that approach me with deck lists, if they we talked about mind gem, it was a little awkward sometimes because yes, it's got a super strong ability, like making your opponent discard three cards or drawing three cards is very strong. But some decks that you can't afford to take a turn off to pay. You can't take your whole turn six. This is all I'm playing to make you discard three because if you're already behind on board or something, you don't have to make that sacrifice. You get to play a six, six who also gets to make your opponent discard three or let you draw three cards. So the mind gem seems like a super easy include super powerful, uh, reality gem. Uh, what, what's your strategy with that? Because the reality gem, there's a lot of versatility with it. Like, you, it's hard to look at a deck with Reality Gym and without knowing and talking to the person who's built the deck going, okay, how are you playing this? Because some people use Reality Gym to turn down resources and hide characters. Some of them are using them to turn up their own resources and flip up opponents' MCs so they can cheat an extra wound on. So what what is your use in this deck for Reality Gym? Well, my main use is usually to... Um... For counter hate, because I really don't have no counter hate in this deck. So, like I said, if they get a flint real big or something, I really have no answer for that. So, being able to flip that card down, because I could flip down just a 
Tim by itself since it's a support character on its own and hide it. Okay. So and allow me to put down or knock the equipment off of a card I need to get equipment off of. Okay. So you're so this is a six crop six six who you're using to remove like maybe Flint gets really big and then you take all the counters off of it and then he hides himself so that you can keep your six six for next turn as well. Yes. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, Serpent Crown is a uh, pretty basic include just because people play strong things. That's another answer to Flint. It's a good answer to Foom. Uh, you can search it out. Uh, I doubt this is ever getting played as a 7-7 seven, seven by itself, but... Now this is a new body. That's about the only way you will come down as a 7-7. Uh, seven, seven. With your power, your MC's new body power. Got it. That makes sense. Uh, and then we come with to the top end, which I do love this top end, let me tell you. Uh, I got to... Uh, David sent me a couple of the games that he played, like in his playtesting, so I got to watch them. I wasn't watching them live, but I got to watch them back. And Onslaught is a house in this list, let me tell you. I got to watch three of his games. I saw him cast two Onslaughts. Uh, one of them was a Fing Fing Foom and a... Uh, Hawkeye, so it was a, 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 a range attacker with quick draw that attacked the whole row, which is kind of like what that was like pretty high roll, but like it was so amazing to see because it's like okay, I get to range attack your whole back row, they can't stun me back, which is like one of Foom's like drawbacks is oh, I have to attack this whole row, I'm going to take a stun. Um, and then I saw Onslaught become a uh, Morloon and he was also like a Hydra soldier, like something small that wasn't good. And it still seemed really strong because he was like, okay, I'll stun this guy. I'll put a minus counter on your guy. And then I've got a big body with three health. So Onslaught is insane in here. Uh, and it, again, that's one of the rewards of playing Zola is that if you're casting an Onslaught, you're hitting one of these, either this really strong seven drop or this incredibly strong eight drop, right? Right, and then the flying ability as well to protect a lot if I need a protection. Oh, yeah, because he, because Onslaught is always going to have uh, flying for you. Interesting. Yeah, man. So that, that seems pretty sweet. Let's look at the, uh, let's look at the, um, the plot twist suite here. We got fine covers, shocks, and strength above all else. So, uh, the fine cover and the shock, that kind of makes sense to me. You're kind of, it looks like you're more of a, a mid rangey to, you have this like really strong end game. Your early game is a lot more utility and it's not stat wise, not as strong. So I'm, you're probably using this to like prevent some early wounds. Uh, but let's talk about the strength above all else. Where, where does that card shine? Cause it's only two, so I can't imagine it's for like every matchup but it's probably more like situational correct so um it, it more so for my eight drops so i'm figured by the time i get that late in the game there's a good chance i could have one in my hand okay and so like when i'm attacking with that food i ain't got to worry about sacrificing you know that attacking that whole front row and then they stunning him back because if i play that usually the food or the onslaught gonna be the biggest character on the board yeah especially if onslaught hits foom and then one of your opponent's characters it's hard for your opponent to be bigger than that right right yeah that's pretty good it, early game like i said early game it could help out with the power loader as well i mean a uh, 8 8 still on three yeah because like you could put the power loader in front and on three your opponent kind of their only answer is going to be the team attack into that power loader probably like a couple four attack guys or something right right so and then like and i so strength above all else is one of those cards that when it's bad in your hand it's bad because you feel like you're like man this is rough having this in my hand but when you finally get to play it it's usually a huge power swing like the board state of like because your opponent has like overextended into something and you get to like take that free wound and they don't get to they don't get to clear this big thing they were trying to clear out and they're getting uh then like they it might like brick their whole their whole turn so because if you have foom in the front and that's it and they team attack with uh half their guys to get to foom so that they can start tearing apart your back row 
Well, all of a sudden, strength above all else, now they don't have any other good attacks for Foom, and they just have to pass their whole turn. So, like, the, the ceiling on this card is incredibly high. So, um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else that kind of, like, sticks out at me. Not really. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I like the I like the Ebony Blade a lot. The, the Some of the early tech cards seem really, really good. I really like the idea that you had of attacking your opponent's resource row. I think this deck could do pretty well this weekend. I'm pretty excited to watch, watch it in action. Yeah, and with this midwinter, with having an open deck list, I'll have access to... I'll probably have an idea what card I'm going after before the max even starts. Oh, for the cubes. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so like I said, with an open deck list, I think the cube will you know, be a lot more useful for me because I could decide beforehand and not really guessing on the fly. Uh, yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, because the open deck list... A lot of people, when Open Deck was first came out, they were like, oh, Ronin, Ronin, Ronin. But, like, Cube's better in this instance, right? Because you get to uh, Ronin, they might not have it in their hands. Cube, you're always going to rip it out of their deck. So Right, I can see how many they got all. You know, if I have a second choice, like, okay, they got two in their hands, so then I'll go after something else. Oh, yeah, that's very smart. See, you get to because you get to look. You don't have to name it before you you get to look and right. then get to pick a card and take all the copies of it. So you could be like, "All right, I'm going in here. I'm going to hit your wilds." That's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna. And so your opponent, I go, "How many how many wilds do you have in your deck?" They're like, "Oh, I have I have two. I have one." I'm like, "Oh, well then I was won't take that. I'll take the second best card, and I'll know right. that if I do hit my yellow cube, I know. Oh, you have three of these in your hand, so now I can rip them out." This that's pretty good, man. I I really liked where this deck is positioned. It's got some good. Uh, it's got Arlem's always got some good defense, and you got a really solid end game. So I'm really interested to see how this does this weekend. So all right, well that's gonna be it for it, uh, David. I appreciate you stopping by and uh, giving us a little insight on this list, and uh, we'll see everyone next time. Thanks again for having me. No problem.